What is going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of On the Road to Victory. I am your host, Jimmy Smith, and I hope you're all having yourselves a fantastic day. Night, I guess, uh, was a, an early day for me. Got some things done around the house and some errands to run. So, uh, look, I wanted to do some stuff earlier, but I thought, you know what? Let's keep this train rolling here with the positional breakdown. So not a live video here tonight, but we're going to go through each position, get to know everybody we've added and lost at each position, take a look at all of the players, projected depth chart, talk about all that great stuff. But anything you have on your mind, would love to hear from you. Appreciate you guys hitting that like button, subscribing, sharing this stuff. Really can't thank you enough. We are three weeks away from training camp. So going to have you know each position broken down. Then we'll have the top training camp battles heading into that. We'll have my projected 53 before we start that training camp. So going to do my best to provide you with as much content as I possibly can. But we started with the quarterbacks yesterday. Go check that bad boy out. But let's get started here tonight with the running backs. And we're going to first take a look at who we've added, who we've lost, and we'll take a look at the current running backs on the roster and, of course, the projected depth chart. And, again, would love to hear your thoughts on this, how you're feeling about the running back room, how you feel about the additions, losses, whatever's on your mind. Love to hear from you. Let's take a gander here at the running backs that the Eagles did add and lose this offseason. So we know, you know, DeAndre Swift right off the bat, he had signed with the Bears, but if you guys follow me on any social media, you know that I told you that morning the reason he was leaving was because the Eagles were locking in and they were going to get Saquon Barkley. That indeed did happen, and I'm still ready to run through an effing wall just thinking about this dude in Midnight Green. Let's effing go. So, yeah, DeAndre Swift, he had a great year, and I did like DeAndre Swift. And, you know, if you look at numbers, he did have a better year last year, but Look at his offensive line. Look at the team around him. But Swift had 1,049 yards, five rushing touchdowns, 4.6 yards per rush, 214 receiving yards and a touchdown. So he did his thing. But, you know, the Eagles were eighth overall in the league with 2,190 yards. Now, 600 of that was from Jalen Hurts. But look, we know who he is. That's not a bad thing. It, like if he wasn't running it, someone else would be. So you can't just say like, oh, they would only have 1,500 yards. Like, He's part of the run game. You're going to accentuate to player skill sets. It's a good thing. So, yeah, you're, you know, losing pieces here. And, you know, we had 22 rushing touchdowns. That was, um, you know, I think they were tied for fifth with touchdowns. And, you know, they were tied for fifth again, I think, with 4.3 yards per carry. So this running back room, it did well. But Boston Scott, Rashad Penny will be gone. Rashad Penny was number five. A lot of people confused as to why the Eagles wouldn't start the fifth running back last year. Wasn't very confusing to me. He was the fifth best running back, so that's why he was fifth on the depth chart. So didn't use him because he didn't have enough to beat out someone like Boston Scott. So Boston Scott, love the kid. Did a lot of things while he was here. Awesome off the field as well. Best of luck with the Rams there, but you know, some people a little upset once those guys were gone. But we signed Tyrion Davis-Price, Lou Nichols as reserve future guys before free agency even began. Then you add Saquon Barkley. I mean, the, dude, the best addition we could get. I love it. And then you draft Will Shipley. And then undrafted Kendall Milton was also added. So you lose three. You've added five to the mix here. So a lot of new pieces here at the running back position. So let's take a look at the current running backs that the Eagles do have on the roster. And as you can see, we got rid of three of those guys, added five. Well, that means there was only one that was remaining from last year, and that was Kenny Gainwell. So a lot of people feel a certain way about him. Look, this kid going into his fourth year, I think that, you know, look, he can try to show something here, maybe get another contract, but... I think Will Shipley is the plan here. We talked about, you know, Will Shipley before the draft, why he was a top fit for the Eagles, why I liked him so much, and why I thought he would be the perfect candidate to learn from someone like Saquon Barkley and be able to grow into that mold they were hoping to get out of Kenny Gainwell. Now, Kenny Gainwell can block like the kid. He can run. And look, Gainwell actually did pretty well. You know, as a rookie, he tied the rookie Eagles record there with five rushing touchdowns. In 2022, he was whooping ass in the playoffs. He was leading in rushing yards and scrimmage yards. 
he was doing well, man. He helped us get to the Super Bowl there. So a lot of people sleep on his game. I do like the kid, but if he doesn't show up this year, you, again, have Will Shipley here, and you guys heard me talk about this kid before the draft. I am excited about him. His versatility, the fact that he can run the ball, catch the ball, use him in the return game all over the place. That was the hope for Kenny Gainwell out of Memphis. Not so much in the passing and return game. Hey, maybe Kellen Moore can figure something out with him, but uh, may the best man win here. And I think Will Shipley, you know, definitely a talented dude. Uh, you're going to be excited. Just strap in. But obviously, Saquon's the one we're all excited. The new number one kid that, you know, grew up playing in Allentown. He actually was born in the Bronx, but grew up playing in Allentown, went to Penn State, second round pick. And we all remember, or the second pick, I apologize, in 2018. We remember that I, for me, it was just sickening because I loved Saquon at Penn State. Seeing him go to the Giants, knowing we'd have to play him. And dude, this dude, always you had to worry about him. Even when the Giants were atrocious, this dude was going to do something. And, you know, over 5,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, 2,000 receiving yards. And he's got 7.3 yards for reception. I mean, this dude's going to help you in the running and passing game. I cannot stress enough how excited I am about Saquon behind this offensive line with Jalen Hurts, the receivers. We have a real team. This dude's going to shine. They're sleeping on the wrong ones. I saw a thing. Didn't even have the Eagles in the top 10 offense. I've been telling you, they're going to be top three, if not the best offense in the league. Just strap in, man. Let them keep sleeping. That's perfectly fine. But then you see some younger guys here that can compete. And, you know, you get a guy like Kendall Milton. We talk about it. Tough nose, you know, hard nose runner. Everybody in the Eagles fan base loves those guys. So, hey, he got the number 36. I know some people were upset about that. But, look, he might not make the team. He might be hopeful for the practice squad. But, um, look, a powerful young man. And, you know, I think overshadowed by some of the great running backs they've had there. But I, I'm excited about this kid. But he's got some competition. You've got Tyrion Davis Price there, who a couple of years ago, you know, was helping LSU win a championship at 4.6 yards per carry there, 15 touchdowns, 1,700 yards. And that's why he was a third round pick by the 49ers. But hasn't seen much here. And going into his third year, you know, some injuries got in the way. You never know in a new system. And look, opportunity he has here with the talent around him maybe something clicks and uh, he gets things going here but Milton and he gonna be battling it out there tough nose kid dudes and then you look at someone like Lou Nichols who we actually added last year if you remember we talked about him but he was the nation's leader in 2021 with 1,848 yards had 16 touchdowns that year and he was a seventh round pick by the Packers because of that some injuries got in his way he was released brought back some things happen there, but you look at those guys like TDP and Nichols, who they have high upside, and you never know. In the right system, they don't have much wear and tear. Maybe you find something there. But this running back room, I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of question marks as to, hey, if something happens to Saquon, what goes down? And, yeah, you never want to see anybody go down. Nobody's going to be your starter when you've got, you know, all pro material here. So, look, Kenny Gainwell, he knows the system. He'll be number two at first, but Shipley's got an opportunity. Milton, TDP, Nichols, they've all got chances here. So I'm very, very excited to see how this running back room plays out in this uh, offseason, the training camp, the preseason. All this stuff is going to be awesome to watch because there's so much youth here and there's so much talent that is you know, fighting for a job here to be the depth on this team. And we know how important depth is. So you know, a lot of people, why do you have backups? Why isn't every player an all pro? Like, that's just, this isn't Madden, man. You got to have depth pieces. So those guys that, you know, aren't all pro that are backups, that's just the way football works. And I'm hoping the best for them and hoping that a new system, new change of scenery can help them find, you know, whatever, you know, was the reason they made it to the NFL. So we'll take a look at the depth chart now, kind of, you know, made it clear as to how I feel about it. But for me, it's Saquon. Then you got Kenny behind him. But I think, you know, I just threw these guys together here, the back four, but you've got Shipley, Milton, TDP, and Nichols. And the door's open here, man. If anybody wants to be that third or fourth guy, man, it's right there for them. Now, we've talked about it. The Eagles want to add a veteran. They feel, hey, man, I don't feel comfortable with, you know, Saquon if something were to happen. I, I'm not against it, but I do feel confident in these younger guys. I'm just hopeful that everybody stays healthy so that the plan can come to fruition. But we'll be going through this. The reason I have everything blocked out so you're not getting confused looking at everything else. But each show, I will have everything else blanked out, and you will see the position. 
You can go check out quarterback from yesterday. I'll try to put out the wide receivers there tomorrow. We'll try to get through this offense this week, then defense. Then I want to be able to break down some of these top battles on offense, defense, special teams, all of the above. I'm looking forward to this offseason, as always. This beautiful, as we like to call in these parts, sicko season. And all of you sickos that continuously tune in, I cannot thank you enough. Sorry that I was gone there for a week. That vacation was truly awesome. I truly needed it. But uh, it's been nice to be back to work. Nice to be back putting in some work here with the Eagles stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed that quarterback show. Hopefully you enjoyed this show. Would love to hear your thoughts on both of those and throughout this entire process. Now, if it, the Eagles do anything, anything happens, I'll make a live video. If not, I will be live this Friday for Fan Friday. So hoping to see you then unless something happens. But until that next time, that's all I've got for you, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the show, do me a favor, hit that like button. Share this bad boy out there. You can subscribe down below. All of the support is truly appreciated. And if you guys need anything, I say it because I truly mean it. You need anything. It doesn't have to be about the Eagles, man, but you can open the conversation with that if you want. Always here for you guys as you are for me. Truly can't thank you enough, but I always try to be a friend and let you know you're not alone in this world. Done too much of that to myself, but uh, I love each and every one of you. I hope you're having a great day, a great week, and I hope to see you all live soon. But until next time, I'm Jimmy Smith, and this is On the Road to Victory. You all stay safe out there, and as always, say it with me now. Go Birds!